الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكم أهلكنا من القرون من بعد نوح وكفى بربك بذنوب عباده خبيرا بصيرا الحمد لله رب العالمين we praise our most generous creator and sustainer, the most loving, the most kind, the most merciful, who knows our faults and our shortcomings, and despite that, welcomes us into his house to seek his forgiveness and to reestablish our, forg- uh, our connection with him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for every time that we disobeyed him, thinking that by doing so, we could get more from him. We ask Allah to forgive us for every time we disobeyed him, thinking that by disobeying him, we could get more from him. Who is the provider of happiness? Who is the provider of peace, of tranquility, of success? Is it not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is he not the sole and exclusive provider of our success in this life and the hereafter? Of our happiness, of our peace of mind, of our tranquility and contentment? It is Allah. And yet why do we disobey Allah, my dear brothers and sisters? The reason we turn away from Allah, the reason we turn away from the sunnah and the sharia and we turn away from the deen, the reason we disobey our Lord who watches us and sustains us each and every moment in our life, it's because we sometimes think that by disobeying Him we can get the peace and success and happiness. So we follow our desires in a very illogical nature, forgetting that Allah is the provider of success, He is the provider of happiness in this life and in the next, and we can never achieve success or happiness by disobeying Him. That is a very foolish thing to do. Rather, our success and our happiness is in obeying Him, is in following the way of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and establishing our connection with Him. Yet look at Allah's love and patience and forbearance and mercy with me and you. Subhanallah. How many times we've disobeyed Him trying to get more from Him and even though we disobey Him, He gives us more. 
out of his generosity, out of his leniency with us. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would treat us as we deserved, we know the Quran says he wouldn't leave a thing on this earth. We would all be destroyed because of our sins and our shortcomings. But Allah is very lenient. He's very forbearing. He's halim. He waits. He doesn't punish immediately. He lets us go that maybe we can awaken ourselves and turn back to him. True love, my dear brothers and sisters, is not when we make a fake image of ourselves and people love us because of that fake image. That's not real love. If somebody has a certain assumption of you and that assumption doesn't reflect the reality and they love that assumption of you, they don't really love you. True love is when somebody knows you as you really are. They know your shortcomings. They know your negligence. They know your sins and your faults and yet despite knowing all of your sins and shortcomings, they still love you. That is the relationship we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows how many times we have disobeyed him, how many of times we have went against the teachings of his beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and yet he still tolerates us, he still forgives us and he still keeps the doors of his mercy and his rahmah open for us. That should really humble us before Allah, how sinful we are, how negligent we are, how many times we've disobeyed him and yet the rahmah and the mercy and the satr he has over us. Who can love us more than our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But we should be careful never to take advantage of the love and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't let Allah's mercy over you deceive you. Sometimes when we disobey Allah, we engage in the muharramat and we think, oh look, I'm doing well in my business, I'm doing well in my life, people honor me, people praise me. Then we continue doing the sins thinking Allah is happy with you. No, Allah is only happy with us if we follow the teachings that he taught. Ibn Ata'ullah wrote in his, very, in his hikam very beautifully. He said, when people praise you about what they assume about you, don't be fooled by what people assume about you. Rather, go with what you really know about yourself. We all know about our reality. And the fool is the one who takes the praise based on other people's assumptions instead of goes with the reality of what that person is. When we reflect over ourselves and we reflect over our shortcomings, we can get to know our Lord much better. The more we know ourselves, the more we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we recognize our weakness and Allah's greatness. We recognize our sins and our shortcomings and His generosity and His mercy and His love and His forbearance for us. Alhamdulillah. So the more we know ourselves, then the more humble we become. And the more grateful we are for Allah's generosity and the more love we have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, we must recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us this deen and this guidance to build us as individuals to build us as human beings, to make us strong foundations because only strong foundations can carry great burdens and great responsibilities. A weak foundation cannot carry a great structure. In fact, if the foundation is weak and you put a great structure on it, that whole structure will topple. Likewise, Allah recognizes that me and you, my dear brothers and sisters, we have a mission, we have a purpose in life to be the vicegerents of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be those who stand up for justice, to stand up against oppression. There are people who dedicate their lives to oppression and injustice and darkness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose me and you to be the beacons of light for this universe, to be the beacons of rahmah in this universe, to be the beacons of mercy in this universe. This is a big responsibility and a big mission that we have, my dear brothers and sisters. Do not underestimate the power that you and I have to change the world if we change ourselves first. SubhanAllah, never underestimate the power that you have as an individual and the effect that you can have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by establishing that connection with Allah. But first we have to build ourselves and we have to establish a strong foundation. Because if you try to build, some of us we try to be involved in activism, civil rights, community affairs. But if our foundations are weak, then we will topple and everything we've worked for will also topple. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us how to build ourselves so that we can carry the burden and the responsibility that we need to carry. Because people are standing up for injustice and oppression, but who will it be those that Allah will honor to stand up for justice? My dear brothers and sisters, we all have the power to change the world. Our only limit is ourselves. We must believe in ourselves and believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can use us to make the world a better place. Have that firm yaqeen that Allah can use me 
to improve my life, the life of my family, the life of my community, and the life of the world. All we need is Allah to open the doors of acceptance. It may be one dua that we make that Allah accepts and through that he not only changes us but he changes the condition of the ummah. Never think that we are too sinful, that we have too many shortcomings. It doesn't matter how sinful we are and how many shortcomings we have. The paths to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are many. In fact, we should let our sins and our shortcomings, the more sins and shortcomings we have, the more we must work to change ourselves and the more we work to serve this ummah and serve this community. Why? Because we have a lot of sins and we need to make up for these sins. So let our sins and our shortcomings that we recognize be a means of motivation to motivate us to work harder in our areas of our strength. Use even our shortcomings and our sins to get us closer to Allah. Subhanallah, what a beautiful deen this is. You know, in Christianity, they have a problem with the concept of sin. They can't reconcile it with how Allah is all, supposed to be all loving, all merciful, and that human beings are too sinful. And they see that as something that they cannot reconcile within their ideology. And you have the problem of evil and many arguments that have made against it. Whereas in Islam, we recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to sin so that we become humble and we recognize our weakness and that motivates us to work to be better human beings and better individuals and serve the deen even more. One habit, and of course, remember, we can never buy our way into Jannah, but we should make a habit with, with whatever sin we are struggling with, that we translate every time we fall into sin into serving others. So anytime I make a mistake, the shaitan tricks me to make a mistake, okay, I'm going to give $50 in sadaqah to help a poor person or a needy person. Soon the shaitan will be telling you not to sin because he doesn't want to see you giving that sadaqah to help the poor and the needy. We have to learn to take our weaknesses and change them into strengths. We have to take the challenges that Allah pre presents for us and turn them into opportunities. Therefore, we go in life with a mentality that everything we face is an opportunity. Everything we face, good or bad, is an opportunity to strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The opportunities are there whether we see them or not. But a lot of times we don't have patience, we don't have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever something doesn't go our way, we become frustrated and angry. I'll give you a simple example, subhanAllah. I was traveling the other day to go to Charlotte to do a Know Your Rights training for the community there. And I'm sitting and I'm waiting for my flight. And I'm watching everybody and nobody's getting on the plane and they're not calling my flight. So I go and I speak to the ticket agent saying, when are, we call, when are you calling the flight? They said, we'll call it in a little bit. I said, okay, I'm going to sit down right here. Let me know when you're going to board the plane. So I sit down. I keep looking at her. 15 minutes later, I don't hear the flight being called. So I go up to her and, and she says, oh, the plane just left. We boarded it and it left. So I said, subhanAllah, didn't you just hear what I told you? But I thought to myself, and I, you know, the natural instinct, especially with time being very valuable to us, to be angry, to be upset. How could I miss a flight and to get angry? And you see the other passengers because there was one or two people who had also missed their flights and they're getting angry. Why are they getting angry? They're getting angry over nothing because they have no trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I thought to myself, no, there's no reason to get angry over something so silly. Let me rather find the opportunity that this challenge has presented. And it was the last flight of the night so I knew I had to spend my night overnight in that city. So I said, there must be an opportunity. And it's all about the attitude. Because if I had the attitude that, no, I'm going to be angry, then I would just sit, and, sit in my misery and nothing would be accomplished. So I had the attitude, no, there must be an opportunity in this challenge. So I'm walking in the airport and a person sees me, African-American young man, sees me and asks me, how are you doing? I said, I could be better. What's going on? And we start having conversation. He tells me both of his grandparents are Muslim and that he loves Islam and he believes in Islam, but he never said the Shahada. So alhamdulillah, within 10 minutes, the brother said the shahada. I said, Allahu Akbar, maybe that is why I missed the flight, so this brother can learn the shahada. And this reminds us the big burden we have, my dear brothers and sisters. People out there are thirsty for the kalima. There are many people, wallahi, if you spend 10, 15 minutes with them, they will say the kalima because they are thirsty for it. But we are hiding it. And we're withholding it. We're withholding the rahmah. There's always opportunities in every challenge that we face. It's just that we have to go with that mentality. So any good we do, any good that happens to us, alhamdulillah, we use that to get closer to Allah. But any difficulty we also go through, we must also have the mentality that, okay, how can I turn this challenge into an opportunity? Even so much so that when we fall into sin, we say, okay, I've done this sin now, how can I make up for it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the person who when he makes a mistake, he finds a way to make up for it. Allah doesn't want us to be perfect. He just wants us to try our best. 
He looks at our hearts and our intentions. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to read to you a beautiful quote from Ibn Ata'ullah in his hikam. He says, you may think that Allah is giving you something. You may think Allah is giving you something while in reality, He is depriving you. Sometimes we think Allah has blessed us with something from the dunya. But we don't recognize that really by getting that, He is depriving us from so much good. Sometimes we get a really good job, but then we never come to the masjid. Sometimes we get a good credit score, but then we take an interest-bearing loan and we lose so much barakah. So you may think He is giving you something, but in reality, He is depriving you. And you may think He is depriving you, you may think Allah is taking something from you, while in reality, He is giving you. Allah never takes. We have to have that trust in Allah. Allah never takes from us, my dear brothers and sisters. He only gives. If it looks like we're losing something, He's really possibly giving us something much better. We just have to find the opportunity in every challenge. If through deprivation He opens the doors of understanding for you, then this deprivation is a gift. You feel that deprivation is dreadful because you do not understand. He might open the door of worship for you, but does not open the door of acceptance. And you might be destined to sin, but this sin becomes a means of ascension towards him. He says, you may even sin, but this sin may be a means of you getting closer to him. How? A sin that produces humbleness and need is better than an act of worship that produces arrogance and prejudice. So my dear brothers and sisters, the point of today's Juma is let us learn how to take our weakness, our shortcomings, to make us stronger individuals so that we can serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and serve the community. Never let the shaitan turn you away from Allah or make you despair or make you lose hope. Rather, take every challenge Allah puts in your life and find the opportunity because Allah loves you and He wants you to be successful in this life and the next. We just have to have our hands open to Allah. Allah is given. The doors of Allah are open. The rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is open. And this is why we go through good and bad in life. The whole point of everything that we go through is so we recognize our need, dependence, and poverty before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His generosity and His love for us. Our goal, my dear brothers and sisters, it is not to find Allah, but simply to seek Him. If we are seeking Allah, then we've reached our destination. Sometimes we think our goal is to find Allah. By that I mean, we think our goal is to be perfect human beings. We think our goal is to feel that we're always close to Allah. We think our goal is that we never fall into sin. No, inshallah, we work for it. Our goal is actually just to go on the path to Allah. Finding him, he will find you. Don't worry about finding him, he will find you. The point is we have to walk the path to Allah, my dear brothers and sisters. Our concern should be with our efforts and not with the results. And that requires us to be humble, that we don't make any claims. We don't claim to be religious. We don't claim to be righteous. No, that we are humble before because Allah only gives to the poor. Allah says in the Quran, as sadaqa lil fuqara, charity is for the poor, for the needy, for those who recognize they have nothing. So when a believer stands before Allah, makes no claims about having anything, recognizing his shortcomings or her shortcomings, recognizing the need they have for Allah, recognizing the poverty they have before Allah, not just the physical poverty, but the spiritual poverty as well, then Allah will open the doors and gives them because He loves to give. Allah commanded me and you that if a beggar comes to us and says, brother, I am starving, I am hungry, give me five dollars to buy a meal, He commanded us to give that person and to feed that person. So what if we turn to Allah and we beg to Allah, Ya Allah, we are spiritually starving. Ya Allah, we are distant from you. Ya Allah, we are disobeying you. Ya Allah, we are very sinful. Ya Allah, we're not reciting Quran as we should. We're not worshiping you as we should. Our akhlaq need to be approved. If we beg Allah to give us and we show our poverty before Allah, don't we think He will also give us? If He commands us to give each other, surely He is more generous than we are. But we have to show our poverty and our need before Allah, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah only gives to the poor and the needy. And we are all poor and needy before Allah. No matter how rich we are, we are all poor before Allah. And no matter how poor we are, we are all rich with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the source of our success in the life and the next. And the point of Juma is a simple reminder to work to re-establish that connection with Rabbul Alameen. The whole deen, our entire religion, and everything we go through in life serves to build within us humility, to be humble before Allah, then to be grateful before Allah. Because when we're humble, we recognize that we deserve nothing. We're entitled to nothing. And Allah gives us so much more than we deserve. There is not one blessing that we have that we can say we deserve it. 
In fact, according to our deeds, we deserve nothing. And yet he gives us so much. So the point of the deen is to make us humble before Allah, not to be entitled. And then when we are humble before Allah, then we appreciate each and every moment of our life. Each and everything that he gives us, we are very grateful for it. And when we are grateful, then we fall in love with Allah by recognizing how much he has given us. The key to happiness in this life, my dear brothers and sisters, is to be grateful. The world right now is suffering from a lack of gratitude. People are ungrateful. That is why there is depression and anxiety and stress and worry. We lost the gratitude to Allah. The entire religion is about gratitude. A kafir is what? Is someone who is ungrateful to Allah. And a mu'min is somebody who is grateful to Allah, who recognizes the countless blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be grateful servants of, of His. Allah says, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Which of the favors and the blessings of your Lord do you all deny? Inshallah, let's take a step forward to move, make some room for the people that are coming. فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Which of the blessings can we deny? Allah's blessings are, count, are countless, my dear brothers and sisters, and He gives us more and more every second. And the whole purpose of our creation, of why Allah created me and you, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ so that we can give thanks. This is why even we go through difficulty, because if you don't go through difficulty, you cannot enjoy the times of ease. So we should appreciate even the nights of difficulty and the days of difficulty. Know that if go, by going through difficulty, Allah is preparing for you to go through a time of thankfulness. How could we enjoy Jannah and drinking from Al Kawthar if we never tasted thirst in this life? We can only t enjoy the paradise because of the suffering and difficulty we went through this life. That's why you find children that are brought up spoiled, they don't enjoy anything they have and they destroy their wealth and their parents' wealth and they live an ungrateful and unhappy life. And you find so many people in Hollywood and everything suffering from depression and drug problems. They don't have any appreciation. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to appreciate you to appreciate life, sometimes we go through some difficulty. Let that be a means of building our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah has given us so much that we do not have time to thank Him even for what He has given us. So how can we have time to worry about what He has not given us? We don't even have time to thank Him for all the great blessings that He has given us. So how can we, thank, how can we worry about what He has not given us? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you give thanks, I will give you more. If you give thanks, I will give you more. And this is the amazing rahmah of Allah that He gives us from His blessings. And if we thank Him, he gives us more. How generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. The whole religion of Islam can be summarized as gratitude. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those people who recognize the immense blessings that He has given us in each and every moment of our life and to dedicate these blessings to serve Him and to serve His deen. Remember, it starts with humility, being humble. After we are humble, we recognize we are not entitled to anything, so we are grateful for everything He gave us. When we are grateful for everything He gave us, we can appreciate everything He has given us. When we appreciate everything He has given us, we love Him. And then when we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can sacrifice for Him. It's very difficult to sacrifice for that which you do not love. But when you love someone, when you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then sacrificing for Him becomes easy. And then that is the best way to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By recognizing the blessings we have and then asking ourselves, how can we use these blessings to give back to the community? What are we doing with the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to use each and every blessing that He has given us to come closer to Him. As I said, no matter how rich we are, we are all poor before Allah. And no matter how poor we are, we are all rich with Allah. As the scholars have said, who, what has He lost? He who has found you. And what has He found? He who has lost you. May Allah make us the true servants of Allah. To be ibad, the abd of Allah, the servant of Allah. He never feels entitled. He always feels humbled. He always feels grateful before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he used to want to live like a servant. He used to eat on the floor. He used to stand his whole night praying and crying in tahajjud. When Aisha radiallahu anha asked, why do you spend your whole night when Allah has forgiven you? He said, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Should I not be a grateful servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we grateful servants to Allah? Do we recognize that we can never thank Allah for everything He has given us? 
Do we thank him verbally? Do we appreciate everything he has given us? And finally, do we prove our gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by using some of the blessings he has given us to serve him and to serve his deen? Nowadays, we are lucky if we give even 2% of what he has given us, 2.5% back to the deen, we think we are religious. If we talk about giving 5% of our time or our wealth or our energy for the deen, we start getting worried and anxious, maybe even have a heart attack. Allah has given us everything. Why are we afraid to give back to the one who gives us? Wallahi, every time we give to Allah, He will give us more and more. And I'm not just talking about money. Look at the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you and find ways to use it to serve the deen and have trust in Allah. The reason we're anxious, the reason we don't give for Allah, the reason we get worried, the reason we're not grateful is because we lack trust. But Allah says, Let those who trust, trust in Allah. Take Allah as your protector. Let go and let God, as they say. Don't worry about anything. Have trust in Allah. Be humble before Allah. Be grateful before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recognize He knows what's best for us. And if he puts us through difficulty, that's only because he wants us to recognize his blessings and help us get back to be closer to him, my dear brothers and sisters. Finally, remember the difference between a believer, a grateful believer, and an ungrateful person. The believer, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives that person, the more humble they become. The more Allah gives them, the more humble they become. The opposite is the arrogant person. That the more Allah gives that person, the more arrogant he becomes. So which one are we? Do we become more humble the more Allah gives us, whether it is in terms of deen, in intellect, in wealth, in health, in power? Because why would we become humble? Because we know we don't deserve anything and Allah overlooks our faults and despite the fact that we've sinned and we disobey Him, He keeps giving us more and more so that makes us humble before Allah. But the opposite is the arrogant person who the more Allah gives him, then he thinks I am independent. I don't need anything. I don't even need Allah because Allah gave him so much. Not recognizing that Allah can take away his health, his wealth in an instant. It is often the dunya that Allah blessed us that keeps us away from him. Let us not let the dunya that Allah blessed us keep us away from him. So how do we thank Allah? One, by recognizing that in nu uh, the, the numerous blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, by thanking him verbally. Third, by thanking him physically by using the blessings he gave us to serve our deen, to serve our community, to serve the kalima of la ilaha illallah muhammadun rasulullah. Don't let the blessings Allah gave you take you away from him. Would we sin if we were hungry and if we worried about filling our stomachs, would we think about all the other sins that we engage in? It is only because Allah gave us wealth and health that we turn away from him. No, use the wealth and health that Allah gave you to establish and strengthen your connection with him. May Allah make us those who are rich through his company and get closer to Him through gratefulness, to be humble and recognize our shortcomings and our worthlessness, and to recognize the great love and the mercy and generosity He has for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in our hearts gratefulness and love for Him, and the ability to sacrifice some of the blessings He has given us to get closer to Him, and to serve the deen, and to serve the community, and be grateful, humble servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna sayyidina muhammadan abduhu rasooluh Ya ayyuhal muslimun Ittaqu Allah wa adhkuru Allah kathiran la'allakum tuflihun Yaqul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi al-Quran al-Kareem Ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaytan al-Rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa al-Asr Inna al-Insan fi khusr Illa al-Ladhina amanu wa amilu salihati Wa tawasaw bil-Haqq wa tawasaw bil-Sabr Wa qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Tuba liman wajada fi sahifati istighfar kathiran Aw kama qal alayhi salatu wa salam Wa qal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Man qal la ilaha illa Allah dakhla al-Jannah Fa yaih al-Muslimun ittaqu Allah wa istaghfiruh Innahu huwa al-Ghafur rahim بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله يا أيها المسلمون اتقوا الله واذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وفرج عن إخواننا المظلومين وانصرهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم 
إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذ منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام علیکم جزاک اللہ